excited to take you along with me as I go through the Quilt Week show that American Quilters Society put on in Daytona Beach, Florida in February. This was a show that was so awesome in that it had some just amazing quilts and amazing talented people that had their work on display. Now bear with us as you go through this video because we had two cameras at the show and we were walking around with those cameras so there's some shaky footage. Um, there's an attempt to give you some really close-up views of the details of some of the quilts so that you'll really truly get a feel for the talent that was involved in putting those quilts together. So come along, stay with us as we go through it. I know we don't get to see all of the quilts in close-up detail, but I tried to take as many um, videos and pictures as possible and as many close-ups as possible and where I do have detail and that kind of information I'm going to talk through uh, throughout the video kind of talk over some of the pictures to let you know who made them what techniques were used um, some of the award winners that were at the show and what kinds of awards that they won so stick around stay with us the American Quilter Society is the largest quilting membership organization in the world according to their literature um, for over 30 years AQS has been in the leading voice in quilting inspiration and advice through a broad suite of products magazines books live events contests workshops online networks patterns fabrics and catalogs so because they had a special when I did sign in I went ahead and became a member of the group of the organization and there were a few perks that came with that so I will um, keep you tuned on what I think of that membership and if it's something that I'll renew at the end of the year. 
highlights of the show was the Diana Cherrywood challenge. In this challenge, um, the the quilters took inspiration from Diana Prince of Wales to create a unique quilt using a limited color palette. They were to use pink and white. Quilters were encouraged to push themselves creatively, think outside the box, and create new fiber art. The contest was open to anyone, everyone, and all the quilters. All the quilts are the same color, fabric, size, and theme, making the exhibit very cohesive and striking. So you'll see here in this video that um, they had, everybody had a different interpretation. There were some really beautiful um, classic pictures of Diana that were interpreted differently. There were different representations of what comes to mind for people when they think of Lady Diana. Um, this was just an exhibit that was just beautiful from the start. I, I really enjoyed this particular exhibit. In this next picture, you see a quilt that is named Navajo Boy with Truck. Now, this was a quilt that was done by Leanne Hillman, Heilman in Glendale, Arizona. Now, she used a stationary machine, which translates to uh, usually a machine that is in one place and the quilt is moved for the quilting, for the purpose of quilting the quilt. The techniques used in this quilt are um, fused applique, hand applique, machine applique, raw edge applique, so many different techniques in the area of applique. Um, there is free motion quilting as well as thread painting and thread sketching. And you can see as you see the close-up design here of this particular quilt, the detail that went into this particular quilt is just amazing and the quilting that, that really brings out the texture of the, the Navajo boy and the face involved. <laughs> 
Clementine Music and Beth Neufer from Fargo, North Dakota. The, the name of this quilt is Celebrate. It's a huge 107 by 107 inch quilt. And you can see here that there's quite the visual look to this quilt when you walk up to it. It was quilted on a movable machine, is the term that they used for a long arm machine. There is machine piecing with piped edging and free motion quilting. And I just thought this quilt had such a wonderful visual effect to it. I couldn't help but take pictures of the very close up views of it so that you could see the detail in the quilting and the detail in the piecing. Um, this one was one of the ones that I thought was absolutely gorgeous. The next exhibit was the Ties That Bind. The Ties That Bind exhibit had a bit of a backstory to it. In fall of 2017, Wendy Brackman, an artist and quilter based in Arkville, New York, learned that the Pine Hill Community Center had received a large donation of silk men's ties. Inspired by the variety of color and beautiful patterns, Wendy started a community project to keep hands busy during the long winter, long winter months in the Catskill Mountains. During the long winter of 2018, a dozen dedicated quilters washed, opened, and ironed hundreds of men's ties for the purpose of cutting out hexagon shapes to create these mosaic story sculptures. So this was a beautiful display of really showing what you can do with silk ties and what kind of designs you can make of those ties um, with a little imagination. And there were different types of designs created by the way they placed these pieces together. Um, just take a look at those designs and notice the, the money tree quilt that is in that display. 
example of a range of colors creating an effect of guilt. This was one that I spent a bit of time just kind of staring at and looking at exactly how this quilt is put together. next few shots you'll see members of the Racing Fingers Quilt Guild in Ormond Beach, Florida. They were um, taking donations for an opportunity quilt and as you see in these photographs, the final photograph, you'll see a picture of the quilt that was actually um, being given away in this, this particular event. This was a beautiful quilt, many, many, many pieces. A lot of work went into this quilt and I, um, I couldn't help but stand and kind of gaze at it and, and really try to imagine the amount of work and piecing that went into this quilt. here was done by Terry Steffen of Palmetto Bay, Florida. Q is for quarantine was the name of this quilt. I was immediately amazed at the techniques that were used in this quilt, including hand applique, hand embroidery, interfacing, matchstick quilting, photo transfer printing using thermofax, foundation piecing, freestyle piecing, improvisational piecing, machine piecing, paper piecing. The quilting was a free motion quilting, also using quilting templates. This was an amazing um, combination of techniques that I think touched me because of what we've all been through related to the quarantine in the last couple of years. It just seems like a labor of love to look at it. Now this was, the design source for this was a Tisca to Tasket. The pattern was by me and my sister, me and my sister's designs for Moda Fabrics. Moda All Stars, all in a row, 24 row by row quilt designs. Um, it was published by Martingale in 2015. It was just a beautiful, beautiful um, quilt that had a lot of dimension and a lot of 
um, interesting points to it to look at for quite some time. So enjoy the, enjoy the view of this quilt. So this next quilt is a quilt that was called In Flight. It was made by Pam Seberg of Kenmore, Washington. And this was quilted on a stationary machine. The quilting techniques were applique, machine applique, hand dyeing, there were embellishments on this quilt, as well as fabric painting and thread painting. This was a beautiful quilt to see in person, to see the textures created by the um, quilting that was done on this piece. In this next quilt, this was one of the few whole cloth quilts that we saw. This was made by Jackie Van Houten from Monroe, Michigan, and it was called So Sweet. It was 41 by 39. They used a long arm machine that was also computer assisted, and the quilting was whole cloth. The source design came from Skill Builders by Joan Knight and Joyce Lundrigan from June 2020. This was a beautiful piece that had a lot of detail to it and was one that held your eye and kept you there while you looked at the details of how this was quilted. Enjoy! This next quilt named Your Serenade and My Nocturne was made by someone from the Republic of Korea and I, you can see on the screen the name of the person that made it. I, I don't want to totally um, butcher the pronunciation. This was a quilt that was quilted on a stationary machine. They used hand applique, hand dyeing, rust dyeing fabric origami, as well as hand piecing, machine piecing, free motion quilting, and hand quilting. This one was another one that was beautiful to see close up and enjoy the, the textures created by the quilting. The next quilt named Lost Time is also made by a person in the Republic of Korea. This was a beautiful quilt that was quilted on a stationary machine as well as hand quilted. They used hand applique, hand dyeing, freestyle piecing as well as hand piecing and improvisational piecing as well as some machine piecing and free motion quilting. This was another one that was abstract in design but beautiful to look at. This next quilt was named Midnight Flight and was made by Joanne Berth from Bonanza, Oregon. This was also quilted on a stationary mach machine. Um, several techniques were used in making this, including beading, collage, hand dyeing, fabric painting, inking, which I'm not familiar with that particular um, technique, free motion quilting, and thread stretching made for a very amazing, beautiful, textured quilt. This quilt 
called Multitasking was made by Kathleen Bovey from Battleground, Washington. This was also quilted on a stationary machine and was machine piece. It was very dramatic in the contrast of the fabric colors that were used in this particular quilt. Painted Magnolia was an awesome quilt to see in person. The quilting techniques on this particular piece made the round parts of this quilt really stand up off of the, um, of the quilt and give it just amazing amount of texture to this quilt. This was made by Kathleen Butterworth from Linfield, Australia. It was hand appliqued. It included couching, machine piecing, and it was free motion quilted on a, um, a stationary machine. This was a beauty to stand and gaze at as we were going through the quilts. Floating Kaleidoscope was the next quilt. It came from a person from Tai Tainan City, Taiwan. It was a stationary quilted, um, stationary machine quilted as well as hand quilted piece. It was applique pieced, as well as hand applique, beading, machine piecing, and free motion quilting. This next quilt was called Cosmic Blast. It was made by Shelly Doyle, D Doyle, I'm assuming that's how you pronounce it, from Geneva, Florida. It was stationary quilted. It was hand applique, there was bias work in this piece, as well as dimensional work, paper piecing, and piped edging. This was a very striking quilt, just based on the colors used in the quilt. This next quilt was called Serendipity, and it was striking to see when you saw it on the wall in the, in the show. It was very three-dimensional. They used hand applique, raw edge applique. The raw edge applique gave the leaves a true leaf look and feel to them when you were standing near, um, near the quilt. It included beading, collage, decorative stitching, dimensional work, hand dyeing, embellishments, hand embroidery, fabric painting, and free motion quilting as well as thread painting and thread sketching. So there was so much to this piece. It was really striking to look at very close up and try to see the different techniques that were used in this particular piece. The next quilt, which was called Copper Enamel Ammonite. Um, this one was made by Kimberly Lace of Colorado Springs, Springs, Colorado. It was quilted on a stationary machine and it, had, it included fabric painting and free motion quilting. But the thing that made this one striking, and I don't know that you can really see it in the picture really well, was that the techniques used in this particular quilt in the fabric painting um, gave it a metallic look so that it almost looked like there were jewels laying or mosaics, maybe mosaic tiles laying on this particular quilt. It was a beautiful one to look at and really great to stand and just really, you know, I spent a lot of time just kind of gazing very close up at some of these quilts just to try to pick out the techniques and admire the talent that went into some of the, to, that went into every single one of these quilts. It definitely gave me inspiration, sent me home thinking that what I do when I quilt is, has so much more room to grow. The next quilt was called Entomologist's Dream, and I have to say this one was so awesome to see. I loved the striking look and colors in the insects against the light background. This was one that was machine appliqued. It included decorative stitching, digitized embroidery, machine embroidery, um, machine piecing, and it was quilted with free motion quilting. And this one was was a joy to watch and um, very interesting to see the techniques used to make this quilt. This quilt was called Black Tie Optional and you can see the name of the person and the location um, where she was from. 
it used foundation paper piecing as well as machine piecing and she quilted it on a stationary machine and this one was another example of an, a great use of negative space and color and was quite mesmerizing to stand and to look at this next quilt called needed more funk included couching decorative stitching dimensional work fabric painting free motion quilting um, it also included thread sketching and trapunto this was made by karen hull sank from colden new york this was um, quite beautiful to look at and an awesome example of just the talent that went into making this particular quilt This next quilt was made by Susan Smith in Federal Way, Washington. It was called Magic Flowers. And she used a stationary machine to do the quilting on this. Digital fabric printing and free motion quilting. The name of this quilt was Checkmate. And this was a quilt that was machine pieced. It was free motion quilting was used to quilt it and it was a design that came from two fabric Bargello by Susan Weaver and it was quilted by Jane Hopridge. This was another one that gave great dimension to the quilt by the way that it was quilted in that there were parts of the quilt that had very little quilting that was allowed to stand up off the quilt and really give it a two-dimensional look. Woven Hope was a quilt by Claudia, um, I'm not even going to try to say that, she is from Germany, um, you can see on the screen the, her name uh, spelled out. She used a long arm machine to quilt this particular machine, this particular quilt with free motion quilting and used machine piecing to machine piece this particular quilt. Here we have the best original design, the quilt that won for best original design, and this was a beautiful quilt to look at. Next we have best stationary machine workmanship, and you can see all of the detail that went into the quilting of this particular quilt. next quilt was called Monkeys in My Hair, and this one was very fascinating. It was a lot of decorative stitching was used on this one, and it was quilted on a stationary machine. But as you got closer to it, Deborah Hyde used very small pieces of fabric that were pieced together to make this the effect that you saw on this particular quilt. This was a beautiful quilt and was worth the extra time to really look at the detail that went into this particular quilt. This next quilt received an award for best hand workmanship. This was an awesome quilt made by Aki Sakaya from Japan and it was called Happy Thanksgiving. It was hand quilted as well as hand applique with embellishments and hand embroidered as well as hand pieced and hand quilting as I said. So this was a beautiful quilt that had a lot of detail to it. So we have, there are several uh, photographs attempting to show some of that detail um, in this particular quilt. The next quilt was definitely aptly named when it was called A Spark of Joy. It was made by Zena Thorpe from Chadsworth, California. She used um, hand applique as well as hand quilting on this particular piece. And as you look at the detail in this, you can see 
again, the dimensional look to it given by the way that it was appliqued and then the way that it was quilted after it was appliqued. This next quilt won Best of Show and it definitely earned that particular um, award in that it was named Midnight Frolic and made by Molly Hamilton McNally from California. She used a long arm machine to quilt this particular piece and used hand applique and hand embroidery to make the quilt itself. This was a beautiful quilt and really did earn the award of Best in Show. The next quilt called Winter Sunset was made by Colette Dumont from Quebec, Canada. This was a quilt that was quilted via stationary machine that used hand applique, beading, crystals, embellishments, and digitized embroidery, machine embroidery, machine piecing, paper piecing, and free motion quilting. And it's really hard to see that in these particular pictures, but it was quite a beautiful piece to see in person largely due to the techniques used as well as the colors that were used to make this quilt. This next quilt had a very distinctive name by calling it If My Granny Had a Long Arm. It was long arm quilted using free motion and template quilting. It was quilted by Sue Dorio. Um, it also includes raw edge applique, decorative stitching, embellishments, and machine piecing. And this was a beautiful quilt to see in person when you could see the quilting um, close up. This next quilt called Sunrise Sunset was a very catching, striking quilt to see from across the room and was even more impressive the closer that you got to it. It was made by Ann Zick from Hillsdale, Illinois. It was um, foundation pieced as well as machine pieced. It was quilted with free motion quilting as well as thread painting. And the design came from Paprika Pattern by Valerie Wells Kennedy, the Stitching Post Sisters, Oregon. And it was quilted by Annette Caldwell. And this was a beautiful, striking quilt in the colors that were used and the quilting techniques that actually um, quilted the top of this one. This next quilt was called Endless Illumination and was made by, um, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name, from Cedar Park, Texas. There was, it included machine piecing as well as free motion quilting. And the design came from Lantern Glow Pattern by Bethany Nemish. This was a beautiful quilt that had really bright, striking colors in it. The next quilt was called Kandinsky's, Kandinsky's Sewing Circle, made by Holly Hull in Charleston, South Carolina. And this was quilted on a stationary machine and I have to say for me personally, this was one that caught my eye. I have on my bucket list the desire to make a quilt that includes circles in a way that is striking and different. And so this one was one that I was very interested in seeing how it was made. They used hand applique, match stick quilting, um, free motion quilting, and this design was inspired by several circles painted by Wassily Kandusky, 1926. This next quilt was called Summer Fun, made by Marina Landy from San Paulo, Brazil. This was a beautiful quilt that had so much dimension and so much realism to the subject matter that was on the quilt. It included uh, techniques like fused applique, collage, hand dyeing. It was free motion quilted and it was um, based on a photograph by Solomon Tita and was quilted by Fabia Denise, D-I-N-I-Z. And this was one that was mesmerizing. It was 
so impressive to see the expression on the little boy's face and how that came through in the quilting techniques. This next, next quilt really was a quilt that I couldn't decide if I liked it or I didn't like it, and I wasn't sure why it evoked the feelings that it did when I saw it. The technique is based on a traditional creation of a quilt. It's got screen printing on cotton, drawing printing quilting, the cloth, cotton fabric, and polyester threads and was quite, quite a striking piece to see. This next quilt won Best Movable Machine Quilting and was a beautiful quilt to see. So that was a wrap for this year's AQS Quilt Show here in Daytona. It was an awesome show. They had some great submissions of the quilts that they had in there. I hope you enjoyed seeing those different quilts and the close-ups of some of it and some of the information around who made some of those quilts. It was an awesome show. Um, so thank you for joining us.